now we continue with our uh, language modeling uh, topic and uh, our next uh, talk is called definition extraction for Slovene patterns transformer classifiers and chat GPT and uh, the authors are Ti Hong Han Tran, Tweet Bot Bechan, Mateja Jemek, Tomasin, and uh, Senja Polak, who is uh, talking. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, yes, uh, Hai could not be here. Um, she was the first author, I mean, still is, and I will be presenting the work. I come from Josef Stefan Institute in Slovenia, and the work was done uh, in collaboration with La Rochelle University and uh, SAZU uh, uh, Research Center of Slovenian Academy of Science. So in the talk, we will talk about definition extraction. So the topic it's about, uh, so definition extraction is the task when from a corpus you try to extract the sentences which are textual definitions. And uh, we are working in the context of terminology uh, domains of from specialized corpora. Uh, we were working in the scope of the project where we were developing a terminological portal for Slovene where, where people are um, yeah, creating terminological dictionaries, uh, also performing term extraction and so on. And the definition extraction step is considered either as candidate definitions that can be then manually revised or as good examples, I mean, in optimal case, just to be directly accepted, but uh, yeah, to be discussed if the results are good enough. So the main contributions of this paper is that we create a uh, first uh, public Slovene corpus of definition extraction evaluation. So it's only for the evaluation purposes because the corpus is too small to be used for training the models. Uh, then there was previous research on pattern-based approaches and on some basic machine learning approaches that we did quite a while ago. But given the recent developments with neural methods, uh, it was obviously the gap to be filled. And last but not least, we compared these di three different pr approaches, so rule-based, uh, classification-based and chat GPT prompting one. So first, let me explain a bit more about the data sets. So uh, the sentences were extracted from specialized corpora um, obtained in the scope of the resource uh, uh, and tools development for Slovene project, so from the RSDO projects. So we first extracted 1,000 sentences, and all the sentences were uh, manually evaluated by five different terminographers who manually evaluated sentences as definitions, non-definitions, or weak definitions. In case of disagreement, they reached a common agreement and labeled the uh, label accordingly. So uh, for definitions, they were really aiming at these genus et differentia definitions where you try to define the term with its sub, uh, with its um, genus, so, uh, um, a general term and then you specify what are the differences to other items belonging to the genus. But weak definitions, maybe sometimes you have the differentia part not well explained or you might have some other defining patterns and it's still very informative sentences but not this perfect uh, terminographer definitions. So these were weak definitions and then we have the non-definitions. So as you can see the data sets are highly imbalanced, which is not a surprise because even in real life scenario, if you have a corpus, only very few sentences will be definitions. But given that uh, if we have thousand sentences and very small percentage of definitions, the statistical results are not really perfect for reliable evaluation. We then used some pattern based sampling to extend the number of definitions. So in this larger corpus, we have at least 13% of definitions and then 18% of weak definitions. So the distribution is better. But since we used pattern-based approach in the collection, we couldn't uh, use it later for evaluation. So we create new benchmarks, as mentioned before. So on one, one hand, we have pattern-based classifier. 
Then we have chat GPT prompting and for binary classification, we train it on a silver standard data set of Wikipedia sentences that I will present uh, just right now. So we compared two different pattern-based approaches that were uh, developed uh, quite a while ago. So one, uh, so they are sort of soft matching patterns, but containing these typical structures like Hearst pattern using a combination of lexical and syntactic information. And a larger list contains uh, also some um, yeah, some different types of definitions, like functional definitions and so on. And then this yes, that's also, it's sort of based on X is a Y type, which is like a bit more uh, focused set. For the transformer classifiers, uh, we first, uh, so basically we use the data set that we constructed a while ago, but the hypothesis here is that if you have a Wikipedia page, you would say that the first sentence in the Wikipedia for a page, it's a definition, and the other sentences are non-definitions. And then we have a variation where we consider as definitions all the other sentences or just the ones that are not starting with the term. So, of course, this is not a gold standard, right? I mean, it's not that all the first sentences are definition, neither that not all the others are not. but as you saw how difficult it is to get a big amount of data for definition extraction, by this we still get totally different number of sentences, like 3,000 definitions and um, 20,000, let's say, non-definitions. So it's a totally different scale, which is useful for classifier trainer uh, training, and you cannot do it with, I know, 10 or 100 uh, examples. So then uh, we uh, fine-tuned four different models. So we worked with Sloberta, which is Slovenian model, and three multilingual models, so standard MBERT, and distilbert XLMR. And we fine-tuned them, fine -tuned them on this silver standard Wikipedia data on definition and non-definition classification. Uh, we also uh, paid special attention to this class weighting because we know that the data sets are unbalanced still. And in terms of chat GPT prompting, so yeah, again, as we saw in previous talks, I mean, I think we are all intrigued. What can we do right now with this tool? So we just tried, I mean, we also first asked him and he was quite confident that he can deal with the task or she or whatever. And um, then based on the prompt, so we asked, uh, we specified that the text is in Slovene and we just uh, treated it as a classification task. So we asked whether this is a definition or not a definition. And we also specified that we don't want an explanation, even if explanations are useful. Um, this was really much easier because of the post-processing part. So we directly get the results which can be imported to the uh, CSV or whatever, I mean, to use in evaluation. So basically it looked like this, we have a prompt, we have the text coming from our examples, and then we have the chat GPT response, in this case, that it is a definition. So in terms of results, we had two different evaluation scenarios. In one case, I uh, mentioned at the beginning that we had these weak definitions, which are not perfect definitions, but still, I mean, maybe depending on how strictly you see the task, uh, can be considered definitions or not. So in the strict evaluation scenario, we considered weak definitions as non-definitions. So aiming only at these perfect definitions as a positive class. So on the, this random data set where we must be aware that we have only very few definitions, so one has to bear this in mind when reading the statistical numbers. But we saw that uh, patterns are, on this random data set, so on the left part, the patterns are still the ones which get the best F1 measure if we talk about the definition class as well as in terms of macro average uh, results. So non-definition is not really very informative, the results we get there. And then we have these language models and uh, they also achieve the highest precision, which is in our case, with people that with whom we worked, they thought it's the most important measure, the precision on the definition class, because if people get very noisy information, they will sort of, 
uh, not be willing to clean it up and then it will get sort of noisy resource. I think this is to be discussed, I mean, this is depending on the view. But um, as we can see in this random data set, like ChatGPT totally failed with, I mean, very high recoil, but at the cost of precision, which is totally useless. But then when we get to this larger data set, um, we still have, so here the patterns were not evaluated because they were used in this data preparation, but we can see that we can get to quite, uh, I mean, quite fine precision for the definition class and F1 scores, of course, it's not perfect, but still, I mean, like F1 of, let's say, 0 0.50, comp given that you have very few examples which are definitional in the text, it's maybe not that bad. If you're int really interested in the recall here, ChatGPT provides quite good results, but again, at the cost of precision. And then when we have this relaxed evaluation scenario, when weak definitions are considered as positive, so as definitions, we have again with uh, language models would give the same, the best precision. So this is the part where you are yeah, optimizing for what you get that it's sort of useful and getting as least noise as possible. But if you are interested in higher recall and in this case also F1 measure, then ChatGPT's results are quite good and competitive. So I think it really depends on the uh, your view whether precision of F or F1 measure is the point of your interest. So we also performed error analysis. So we found out that basically a lot of problems were due to sentence segmentation. So we had really long blobs of text containing several sentences and then all the manual evaluation just treated it wrong. This sounds quite a trivial problem that one could address in post-processing. But, um, and then also that sometimes we were really not getting sufficient context and it was therefore evaluated as insufficient. So in transformer classifier, again, like sometimes we got really long sentences, I mean, concatenated sentences. So this is the same, this quite trivial error. But also in many cases, I mean, we do get informative context. For instance, if you read the, uh, English translation or for the Slovene ones, which are well represented here, even the Slovene sentence. I mean, you get the genus part, you get this hyperneme, which is, but then you, this differential part, it's not really definitional sentence, sentence, but it could still be maybe used as an example, as a good example, or maybe as a first inspiration for writing a definition. And then in chat uh, GPT, also, I mean, we saw similar behavior. So oh, if you have several sentences, we got several labels. Of course, we can group them, but I mean, it's, uh, we are coming back to this segmentation problem. And on uh, the other hand, I mean, there are, of course, also misclassified examples. And in some cases, the explanation was anyway uh, provided even if we didn't ask for it. So basically, um, if we look at these examples, we can, uh, we can uh, yeah, uh, mention few uh, concluding remarks. So first we presented a novel evaluation data set for Slovene definition extraction using random sampling and pattern-based methods. So um, when you evaluate the definitions, like usually you have a corpus, like let's say a domain a specialized corpus, you extract the sentences, then you get these candidates, and then you sort of evaluate what is useful or not. But this doesn't allow for systematic comparison between different methods, right? So if you want, I mean, we now produce three branch lines, but if anyone wants to evaluate their system, you have to have sort of a gold standard. So uh, this is, and you need a gold standard to evaluate recall, which is usually not possible if you're just evaluating the extracted sentences. So this is the added value of creating the data set. Um, then, of course, the data set is not big enough to be used for training, as we saw. So we had this, uh, we took this Wikipedia as an input data, of course, it would be nice to take, uh, to have this gold standard and to take more terminological definitions for 
the training, but as we saw, the results are, I mean, quite fine, not perfect. Um, and then in terms of results, we compare the different methods. So we saw that while these root-based te techniques are uh, okay when we have very strict evaluation scenarios because the patterns are matching quite well, this genus differentia uh, form anyway, so I think this is sort of r related what we are looking for. Uh, when we have more larger set and uh, maybe less strict evaluation criteria, uh, language models are definitely a better way. So in terms of which one to choose, so on one hand, language model classifiers have higher precision, so they were trained with this Wikipedia classification data set, and uh, they still uh, achieve high precision on the exact act from extracting from corpora. On the other hand, uh, ChatGPT has high recall and is sometimes also F1 measure, so it can be an interesting tool if we are not that uh, strict about not getting noise into the model. So in terms of future work, of course, we would like to extend the evaluation data set size and also diversity. So this was done from the corpus with specialized uh, texts. So there were textbooks, PhD theses, and um, scientific articles from four different domains, but still it's uh, a rather small number of definitions. So it would be nice to have a more diverse data set. Then, since we have three different methods and of course, there can be others. It, it would ma probably make sense to use some kind of ensembling of these methods. So either based on, um, I don't know, how reliable the prediction is in the transformer models or just combining the predictions overall. And then, uh, yeah, from a large language model perspective, I mean, here we just used prompting to use it as a classification task, right? But I think the natural thing would be to at least try to generate definitions. Then one should also check whether this is acceptable for the community of terminographers or not, because people often like that examples do come from the actual sources. So I think this is something that is not only to be experimentally evaluated, but also needs uh, research on acceptability from the user's point of view. I mean, especially uh, we have seen that, I don't know, in terms of references and so on, sometimes language models do come up with generated text that it's not fully reliable. So if you're talking about a very specialized language, uh, I mean, do we want to have the grounding in the data set that it's really, that this was written by specialists or do we trust that the generated example is good enough? So I think this is some interesting discussion. And also maybe from a uh, chat GPT point of view and other, I mean, generative models, um, we did use this Wikipedia, Wikipedia data set, which is probably, I mean, it's a yeah, easy resource to get, but it's not really specialized corpus in the same sense that the corpora from which we are extracting the data set. So maybe leveraging this uh, language models would make also a sense would make also sense to use uh, to generate training data examples as an alternative to gold standard data sets so uh, thank you very much and I look forward to any questions from your side thank you any questions Yeah, thanks for the interesting talk. I have two shorter questions. The first one is like from which topic were the um, yeah, definitions you extracted? And the second one is if you could elaborate more on this process you did for generating more definitions in your data. Okay, I did understand the first one. The second one, maybe you have to repeat it. Database sampling, yes. Okay. Uh, so for the database sampling, uh, okay, so Oh, I can answer both <laughs> at the same time. So they come from four domains. So it's a corpus that it's also released via clarin.si. So it was 
the corpus was constructed and we used it also for terminology extraction evaluation. So it contains veterinary domain, linguistic domain, biomechanics domain, and another domain. <laughs> um, and for um, these four domains, each of the domain had uh, textbooks, I mean, or maybe one textbook, no, a scientific article, PhD thesis, so to try to cover at least different genres, but the corpora are still rather small. So um, these corpora were then used, yeah, for uh, annotating term terms, so it can be used also for terminological, uh, termi terminology extraction. And then for the definition extraction from these corpora, so first we randomly sampled uh, just thousand sentences, which were the number that, uh, yeah, for evaluating. But as I mentioned at the beginning, this, I don't know, in thousand examples, we first removed the duplicates. So we have like 961 sentence. And then when you evaluate it's, I mean, the distribution is says in real life texts, right? So we got, I, don't, uh, I, don't, I think between around 15 definitions, right? So with 15 definitions, you cannot do much. I mean, you can evalu evaluate it, and it, it's the only way sort of to evaluate recall in, I mean, end precision in really objective scenario because it's randomly sampled, right? So it mimics the real life scenario. But on the other hand, any statistics, I mean, we do provide them, but like any statistics some 15 examples, uh, you miss one example and the statistics is totally different. So with a bit of, distance, this is not really perfect data set. So that's why then to extend the number of definitions to get more definitions, we um, then use this pattern based approach that we had to exclude from the evaluation on the larger data set then. But on the other hand, it allowed us to extract more sentences with potential to be definitions and they were still manually evaluated and so on then with all the terminographers so in this other data scenario we have like totally different ratio which is uh, i mean at least we have higher number of definitions and then the scores are more reliable uh, any questions <coughs> First one is traditional. Which which model is used? Three point uh, five or four? Yeah, this was done with three point five. I mean, okay. And uh, regarding definitions, I I a bit um, confused because uh, there are many types of definitions out there. I agree. For uh, yeah. children and very precise definitions, definitions which are written in ISO style. And so on, so on. Uh, yeah. So they were. I mean, we, we can uh, get at least ten basic types of mm. definition, and uh, how exactly? I I I I guess that ChatGPT could uh, recognize, uh, and I I know because I'm using this approach when I write definitions. I say uh, I ask ChatGPT to write definition for computer using all ten types. Mm. So I can compare how it uh, goes, and uh, so ChatGPT could be very flexible to recognizing uh, what uh, we meant by definition. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, about these other models, uh, I, I really doubt, doubt that uh, they are able to uh, distinguish between definitions and non-definitions. This is one thing. And maybe you can you can try a, some uh, I would say side project, um, uh, um, prompt uh, Chat GPT rewrite uh, yeah. definitions in one style, mm. and you will be amazed by results. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot for the comment. So I agree. I mean, there are different definition types, and also I said in this rule-based approach. I mean, I. I uh, studied this quite in detail a while ago, and I totally agree that there are different definition types. But in the scope of this project, so we were working with a core group of terminographers who were evaluating it towards this ISO definition type, and they were really uh, seeing as a perfect definition this genus differentia definition, and basically, 
that's why this weak definition concept was also introduced. But b I think it really depends, I mean, on the end users. So, uh, I mean, even functional definitions, I think if you're creating, uh, I don't know, terminological dictionary, they can serve its purpose will be used as good examples and so on. But then, yeah, it depends on the, I mean, we were working with a group of uh, terminographers who had quite strict view on the definitions. So, I mean, and then it's exactly what you're saying. So I think um, obviously from transformer models where you have some doubts, I think it, I mean, it always depends on what is the training data, right? So in our case, given that the training data was Wikipedia, uh, these first sentences probably do not cover the entire variety of possible definitions. But I, I mean, this is just, I, d I don't believe that the models themselves, they would have a problem distinguishing even between different categories. I mean, it wouldn't be perfect, but it's worth a try, but it all depends on which training data you use and if you have these categories marked, right? But I, I mean, I agree that even the prompting here is really done in this binary classification because that was the view of the, let's say, people with whom we collaborated. Hey, now, unfortunately, our time is up. Uh, thank you, Senja. Thank and, you. Uh,